People often ask me, did you write the book because you planned to start your own business? Well, I wish that I could tell you that I was that strategic and visionary, but honestly, it never crossed my mind. I just wanted to share this with other hospitality people. I loved my position and I loved the company that I worked for. Welcome to The Yes Show. I'm your host, Christine Trippy. Each week, we'll explore the life-changing power of saying yes, along with hotel leadership made easy. Get ready for inspiration, fun, and sweet hospitality. Let's go. Hey there, welcome back to part two of the Yes Show kickoff bonus episode, where I'm sharing the most significant career yes I've ever made. Now, we left off on the three leadership lessons. Number one, embrace imposter syndrome. Number two, fail forward. Number three, nothing changes until your thoughts and words change. Keep these in mind. Learning something once doesn't mean you've mastered it. We all need reminders. And as you'll see, I sure did. Now we're at the part of the story where I finally stopped shooting on myself and I decided I will write yes as the answer. Because if I could give one gift to every service provider, it would be the ability to own their day, love their positions and change the world one yes at a time. Sounds sweet like a pineapple, right? Well, buckle up, this ride gets bumpy. We're hopping in the Wayback Machine to 2015. I had said yes to writing that book. However, I had no idea how to write a book. Instead of playing the victim, I changed my mindset and words, which led to new actions. I said, I will learn to write and self-publish a book. I will watch YouTube videos on how to do it. I will have coffee chats with other authors. And one I will at a time, I was making progress. And eventually, I actually ended up with a manuscript. Lo and behold, (laughs) the next step, I had to hire an editor and fix all those commas. After the editor said it was ready, I found a lot of mistakes. And if I found them, you know we had a problem. I hired four editors in total, and every time there were issues, imposter syndrome started to creep back in. Again, I started saying, who was I to write a book? I'm not an author. I don't know what I'm doing. And just like that, I put baby back in the corner. Let me switch gears for just a moment. Something I do with every audience is I have them create an I will commitment and share it. A Harvard study shows that by doing this, you are 10 times more likely to succeed in whatever commitment you've made. Well, I practice this approach regularly and I shared this, my goal of writing a book with hundreds of people. And naturally, when I saw those people, they would ask, how's the book coming? That pressure made me reevaluate. Was I going to quit Or was I a fighter like Rocky, my favorite? It's not about how hard you get hit. He says, it's about how many times you get back up. So I got back up after hiring five editors. I was finally confident that the book was ready. I even had a beta team testing out the book and taking it for uh, a test run. My family, colleagues, acquaintances, and they loved the book. I mean, they really loved it. And bonus, only one typo was found and corrected. I was so thrilled. I was actually thinking this is going to happen. But here's the tea that I never spilled before. There was one beta tester that I hadn't heard back from. And when he finally gave his feedback, oh, it hurt, like really hurt. I was crushed. I was embarrassed. I didn't tell anyone. I just put baby back in the corner. I'm I'm even embarrassed right now sharing the story with you because how many times do I have to remind myself about failing forward? Maybe you felt this way too. My hope is that you realize through hearing these stories is that it's not just you, it's all of us. 
It's the most successful people. They are doing this too. We have to keep reminding ourselves, fall, fail, but get back up and get back out there. And let me pause here for just another moment and share another amazing lesson that I recently actually learned from Jesse Itzler, which is to expect the pain. Now I'm paraphrasing his words, but he says, if you're running a marathon, starting a business, becoming a parent, expect the pain. The reason people drop out of the race and quit a business or give up on their dreams is because when they get to mile 20 and they're in pain or get stuck in the middle of their goal, they think that that pain is never going to go away. It's going to last forever. And they quit. When you're at mile 20 of a 26 mile run, what did you expect? If you're launching a business or raising kids or going to college, what do you expect? Do you think that it's going to cruise through a life like a flat road? Heck no, it gets bumpy. It doesn't work like that. He says that when he's running a hundred mile race and he hits mile 40, he's like, oh, hi, pain. What took you so long? <laughs> you got to look for that video because it's awesome. Maybe I'll put that in the show notes. Expect the pain. We have to know that there are going to be bumps in the road. Expect the pain. Now, fast forward over a year later, I had that baby in the corner for over a year. And a year later, I was at a GM conference feeling energized and inspired from all the uplifting conference speakers, I became recharged to achieve my goals. And my biggest one was my book. I wrote on the events commitment wall that was in the event hallway, I will publish my book. And luckily, someone took a picture of me writing it. And I hung that on my refrigerator for motivation. Every day I looked at that picture. And that was in March of 2019. And only a few months later, I was ready to launch. When launch day came, I, I was terrified. Night sweats, stress, worrying about trolls or criticism or bad reviews. My entire life, my identity had always been tied to my work ethic and my results. And failing publicly felt like it might not even be bearable. So for that reason, here is just one more strategy before I wrap up that I'd love to share with you. And I learned this from Mel Robbins, that when fear creeps in, then that imposter syndrome starts, we all of a sudden start saying, well, what if this, or what if that, and all the what ifs come up. And when that happens, I want you, you, to, you to use the if then strategy. What I'll have you do is write down your worst case scenarios of anything that's scaring you and how you will respond. If this, then that. So for example, if I get a bad review, then I'll thank them for their feedback, read the positive ones. If there's a typo in the book, then I'll correct it and laugh about how everyone else has a limited edition copy. If someone trolls me, then I'll block them and maybe I'll tell my big brothers. Suddenly, when you do that and you outline the toughest, most scariest fear and you put an answer to it, it suddenly doesn't feel so scary, does it? I'd love for you to try it. If there's something out there that you're ifing, <laughs> I want you to try it. And I even made a freebie to guide you through it. So check the show notes for your freebie. You know, I love to give you freebies. Okay, it was time. I pulled the trigger and in August, I hosted my book launch party. And yes is the answer, was out in the world. Hot damn to Molly, man. I, I can hardly believe it even five years later telling you this story. Now, for a girl whose biggest aspiration at 17 years old was to be a banquet waitress, which by the way, is an awesome job. I've now sold thousands of books and received hundreds of reviews. And if it's okay, I'd love to share just one of the very first Amazon reviews that I received from a wonderful person named Deb. 
Deb wrote, this book changed my life. I work in the service industry and it can be so challenging to give customers the best service while following company guidelines. This book teaches you how to navigate tricky situations in a positive, friendly way that makes customers feel cared for. Deb, I don't know who you are, but if by some chance you are listening today, you have no idea what you're saying yes to take the time to write that review has meant to me all these years. You are exactly the person I wrote this book for. And you and your review was exactly what I needed to keep me going. Thank you for that gift. And this review hangs on my desk and it has for years to remind me that when you show up to life and you say yes, you can change the world. Get a little emotional. <laughs> well, Wise Pineapples, that's my yes story up until 2019. And it only gets yesier and crazier from here. But I'll save that sweet tea for later. I'd love to hear from you. Do you enjoy these shorty episodes? Leave a review, DM me, or send me an email. Your feedback helps make the show valuable for you. And, and that's why I'm here, to make it valuable for you. Next week, I'll be back with our first guest, the amazing downtown Shelly Brown, who's going to share why you you should say yes to being weird. Don't you love it? Are you excited? You're going to love it. Thanks for joining me. Stay sweet, my pineapple tribe. That's a wrap for today's show. Say yes to taking action and changing the world one yes at a time. And oh, my friend, will you say yes to review, like, and subscribe? The more yeses you give, the more juicy goodness I can bring to all of you wise pineapples. Cool or cool?